I've got four colors of stardust to try today, and I'm taking it to the lake to test its durability. What's going on guys? Welcome back to STG. Got some new stuff to play with today. I got my hands on four different colors of this stuff called Stardust made from Lurecraft. I've heard of it for a while, but have never gotten to play with it until recently. Uh, and I have to say, I am pleasantly surprised. So I'm excited to share with you all four colors that I have. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna take those jigs. I've got four different kinds of, four or five, different kinds of jigs already um, poured out here. We're gonna paint all of those together and then we're gonna take it to the lake and we're gonna test out the durability because this stuff says it is unbreakable. So here are my four colors. The first one is one called Weedy Camo. Uh, it's a very dark green. I've got for that one poured up a quarter ounce football head. Next I've got Khaki Green. This is more of a flat finish, no uh, extra, not really sparkle, but no extra flake or anything in this one. And we're going to put that on a 5 16 tip up. I also have Sparkle White. Couldn't think of anything better for this than of course a quarter ounce swim jig head. And lastly, a very interesting color. It's called White Camo. You can kind of see what's going on on that one. Pretty interesting stuff. We're going to be putting that one on a 332nd ounce uh, weedless Ned head. I also have a 7 16 ounce uh, tip up. More on this later, as well as a half ounce Ultra Minnow. Lastly, you're going to see a couple of new things on the table. One is a bowl. In case you're wondering, I've already tried it. You cannot put this stuff in a fluid bed. It just doesn't, it doesn't puff up. It's too heavy. Which means the only space that you have to coat your jig head is inside of that guy. And I found that to be a little cumbersome. We're going to try it with a bowl some today. I don't know if it'll work. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll find out together. Lastly, a cup of water. Yes, a cup of water. This is the last step in the process. I don't know how critical it actually is to put it in water. The directions do say to do so. I think it just flash cures it. Um, you know, it, it hardens it really quick. I usually just put it in the test tank but got a glass or a cup of water here so we'll use that today speaking of process let me just read to you the process from the back of the jar it's a little difficult to understand sometimes but i think you guys are going to get the gist all right here we go straight from the label heat your part well with a small torch we're actually going to use a heat gun but it works dip it in the stardust powder for two seconds Heat again the powder so it is homogenized and circle the jig. Put eyes on dot 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 or not. Dip it in the water and shake for 10 seconds. Presumably you shake it when it's in the water. Parenthesis, no baking needed. Boom. Literally, it says boom. Ready to fish. It becomes very durable with no paint chipping. Now that you have used stardust and you have fished with all the rest, fish with the best. So aside from the torch, we will use the heat gun today. We're going to follow pretty much all of those steps. We are not going to put any eyes on, although I suppose you could. We could do it with the uh, with this guy. Just not going to. It's not really necessary. But I did find an interesting little tidbit. You guys know that I like the uh, heat shrink tubing. This does work with this application method. It keeps uh, the stardust off of the hook eye. You put it on before the initial dip, and then you take it off before the second heat. So you guys, you guys will see all of that process when we do it, but we will be using the heat shrink tubing. Boom. I think that's everything. Let's get to painting. All right, first up is Weedy Camo. Doesn't that look good? And I've got my quarter ounce uh, football head. Like I mentioned, we'll put the uh, heat shrink on after I get it on the heat. We'll also put in our pin to uh, keep the stuff out of our weed guard. 
All right, sorry, got to keep the heat on because we're going to need it again. So let's get our heat shrink tubing on. Put that back on, shrink it down, get our pin in. Come on. And into the cup we go. It says for two seconds, but as long as it's covered, get rid of as much as you can. That's what it looks like initially. Now we're going to take the shrink wrap tubing off. I'm going to leave the pin in. We'll see what happens. And put it back on the heat. And that shrinks down or it kind of melts the stardust to the head. So that's what she looks like. See, I missed a little bit where the right underneath the post or the pin. So I'm going to heat it up there. I've tried this before as well and just grab a little bit and sprinkle it on with my fingers and it seemed to work so we'll test that too can you go back and cover any bare spots take that pin out see if we can get a more direct heat on that area yeah that's not bad turned off the heat so you guys could hear you can see the head so i haven't dipped it in the water yet Again, I don't know that you have to have to, but it does say to. So into the water. You can hear it sizzle. Plenty hot still. And we're going to shake it for approximately 10 seconds. I don't know if that was 10 seconds, but there it is. The finished product. No curing in the oven. That's the claim to fame on this stuff. Is This is ready to go. And even cool to the touch because we just doused it in water pretty darn cool i gotta say and as dan has mentioned on his channel a couple times he's used them in some builds it has kind of a rubbery ish texture to it pretty neat stuff all right next up we've got khaki green and you can see i've placed it in a bowl Hopefully, the dipping process will be a little bit easier this time. Um, I've done these before, and it doesn't need to get up on the spring, right, on the tip-up. So no worries about that. We're going to go to the smaller size 332nd heat shrink because that's a smaller hook. This is a VMC 2 watt Barbarian. So let me get this guy on the heat, shrink wrap, and then we'll see how our bowl works out. All right. Heat shrink. Seal that up and into the bowl. Oh, that's way easier. Get around. Knock it off. Again, that's what she looks like. Pop the top or the uh, cover off and back on the heat. All right, this one's, I'm moving it around a little bit because it was wanting to clump up on me just a little bit. But into the water we go. And there you go. Ooh, that came out nice. I was a little worried there. Sometimes even with powder paint that's um, green pumpkin for some reason, it just can cause you some trouble. So, yeah, that guy looks nice. And, of course, styrofoam bowl like this. Right back into the container she goes. On to Sparkle White. This one, as you may recall, is on the quarter ounce um, swim jig head. And uh, I couldn't help it. I had to get some eyes. I mean, if we're going to do it, let's at least try it. That could be a little interesting. So, may look completely janky. We may jack this thing up here to Kingdom Come. But, hey, you don't know if you don't try. So, Move it around a little bit, make sure it's okay. Grab my tweezers. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. There we go. I can move it around. That's at least encouraging. I hope you guys can even see this. I'm focused on the... Oh! Stop shaking. Somebody had too much caffeine today. Holy cow. That actually worked. 
into the water. So it did have time to um, let me get those eyes on. Yeah, nice and cool to the touch. Dang. Okay. That one's a little high, but shoot. I'd say that's a win. Last but not least, white camo. A nice surprise for me. I didn't think I was going to dig this one as much, but I got to say, it was a fan favorite when I did it the first time. So we'll see what you guys think. Small head, that one didn't take nearly as long, but look at that color. Isn't that cool? We're almost done, but I got two more things I want to do. This is one of them. Um, Dan actually mentioned this on one of his recent videos. I wanted to kind of test it for myself and see what the limit is, but this is a 7 16 I believe. Uh, yeah, it's a 7 16 tip up, and I purposefully cut the sprue off a little high. You can see how much I left there. I mean, you can totally rub your finger all over it, and there was even a little spiky part that's since fallen off, but um, I wanted to see if we could cover this thing, coat it, without any kind of finishing. All those other ones that you saw here a minute ago, those were all uh, finished the normal way, right? I took a, a file to them, got them looking really nice. This one I left purposefully janky. We are going to go back to our uh, weedy camo and see if just minimal cleanup, you can still use this stuff and get a good result. I'm gonna do that all off camera here, but I will show you the results once it's done. Well, folks, there you go. She looks pretty good. And there's the back. So it doesn't completely cover it, but I mean, I, I really left an awful lot there, but man alive, that is 100% fishable all day long. And if it's just for personal use and you just wanna knock a bunch out without spending time making them look all nice and pretty, that's totally, totally doable. So what are the downsides? Well, I've got an ultra minnow here that I think will illustrate the downside. You can see here, look at the detail in this. There's even a little, there's a little fin right here. Obviously eye sockets, there's scaling in here. We lose some of this even in the powder paint world. But, so what I thought I'd do is paint this one in white and show the impact of this kind of thick material on something that's highly detailed and why maybe it's not the perfect fit for that specific application. And there you go. You've lost all of that detail. I mean, you can kind of see where the eyes go, yeah? But other than that, it's such a, a thick coating. Um, any way you slice it, I mean, just getting it on there, just the nature of the stuff, how heavy it is, it won't work in a fluid bed because it's too heavy. So when it sits on a jig to have it fully covered, it's just heavy and thick. So it's not, I would say, the best solution for anything detailed like this, but archie heads, football heads, Ned heads, uh, shaky, uh, shaky jig heads, all of those would be great, just probably not something that requires a lot of detail like an ultra minnow. So our jigs are done. Now it's time to find some plastics so we can take these guys to the lake and test out the durability. All right, first of all, we need something to go on our football head. And I actually had one in mind. I would pick one of these guys, more on that later, but actually this one right here. This is the new rocket grub that we did uh, in the last video. So I think that would look positively dandy on there. No, no skirts or anything, just soft plastics. Now we need something for this guy, our tip up. And I have the seven inch open pour uh, finesse worm from Epic. This guy is the same purple and gold as our rocket grub. So that's an option. Um, but I'm thinking this guy, look at those. Those came out beautiful. Um, that is the dark melon color, the gold color that we had left over. And I just made up some simple black and then poured those in that uh, seven inch open pour as well. So I'm thinking one of those dudes, the green's a little off obviously, but that's gonna look pretty dope. For this guy, 
I actually poured just today uh, these right here. Gun, the Rocket Grub three and a half. It's got a sparkle tail and then a smoke over um, monkey milk, I think, is the primary color there. So I think that's going to be perfect. We're going to rig that sideways. So it's going to sit like that. And then for our white camo, going back to the old speed worm, or sp speed worm, speed shrimp, the copper monkey. You guys remember this color? So super copper with purple flake and then monkey milk on the bottom. I think the red and the copper and all that will definitely work. We have a couple more heads. I'm going to bring the other the other head. Maybe maybe we will take one of these and put it on the other head. Where is that thing? Yeah, I think that's going to look really good. So I've got a bunch of stuff here that's going to be going on the website. We've got some slouches and swim baits. Here's that same seven inch open pour in a uh, smoke color with some chartreuse and the blue and silver. Actually, we've got more open pours here. We haven't done that on the channel yet, but I'm hoping to soon. So those look good. But uh, most of this stuff, if not all of it, is going to be on the website. I did want to ask you guys, though, this guy right here. So this is the 5 inch Do It Molds Mad Dad Open Craw or Open Pour Craw and uh, look at how awesome those turned out. If this is of interest, you guys would like to see this open pour or something similar to it pulled off as a video, just let me know. I'd be happy to do it. It's the same gold that we used on the rocket grubs. Um, a little bit of simple black, as I mentioned earlier. And then uh, that's lava crawl, the same lava crawl left over from our rocket grub video. So I'd be happy to do one of these. If that's of interest, just let me know down in the comments. So the baits are selected, the jigs are poured. Now it's time to see just how unbreakable is this stuff? So let's head to the lake. We here. So for the purposes of our testing, durability testing, I could think of no better test than rocks. All right, first up, tip up. This is the one with the little extra on the top, our big old shaky head worm. Ugh, there we go. Oh, we've already already got it stuck. That's good. I'm gonna be really aggressive with this. I'm not expecting to catch any fish. Not that that would hurt my feelings necessarily if it happened. But I'm gonna put these things to the test as best as I can and just slam them on these rocks as much as possible. Hopefully, which has already happened a couple times, they get jammed down into some rocks. We can really pop them up through there. See how that head is holding up. Yeah, that's hitting rocks all the way back. All right. Let's go one more. And try to get it right up on it here. And then we'll take a look and see what this head looks like after three casts. Oh, that was a good snag there. There's another one. Come on. Popped it out. Drag it sideways on some. All right. What does she look like? Yeah. Definitely rougher than it was. Can feel the texture change in it. There's some scuff marks. Hopefully you guys can see that. But overall, I mean, none of the paint has come off. It's pretty good. All right, let's try another one. So I think this guy's going to be really interesting. I'm especially curious to see what happens with these eyes. All right, haven't put them on. I didn't seal them. Anytime I have. Uh, eyes on a bait. I always seal it afterwards with either two-part epoxy or Sally Hansen's. So none of that here. Let's see how it goes. Get it down to the bottom. Same thing. 
worst case scenario, right? I'm just gonna drag it along those rocks. Not how you would fish a swim bait, or a swim jig rather, but, or swim bait for that matter. Dragging it on rocks, but it's gonna give us our best uh, assessment. Ooh, there's a snag, I popped it loose. All right, there's one cast down. Pull it sideways the whole way here. Really try to keep it along the bottom. All right, two down. One more. Let's try to speed it up a little bit without lifting it up. Let's see if I can really jam into some rocks here at speed. All right, how did we do? You see the crap all over it. Well, the eyes have remained. That's positive. Same thing, I can feel the uh, texture has definitely changed, but no visible wear. All right, let's do a Ned head. Let's see. One more. That's three. How are we doing? I think this one's fared the best, but it's got the least amount of surface area as well. I'm impressed. It's good stuff. Holding up really well. All right, bait change. Brought three rods, five baits though. So everything has held up well thus far. Moving on now to our khaki green. A smooth finish. Shaky head with that coral snake type deal. I think Chris Jones did a video on that pattern not too long ago. He used dusting, I think, um, inside the mold for the gold, if I recall. So, wasn't my intention, just happened to have that kind of stuff in remelt from our rocket grub video. And it turned out really nice. All right, that's three, how'd it do? Same story, different head. No longer glossy, right, but Kind of a matte finish now. Definitely, you can feel the texture difference, but holding up like a champ. Last but certainly not least, our little quarter ounce football head. I don't expect any difference. Don't know why I would, but for the sake of completion alone, we've got to do it, right? One cast down, two. All right. Three down. Sludge covered, but no worse for the wear, just like the others. I got that sucker hung up a couple of times, so. Overall, I'm impressed. Well, so here I sit, editing, as you can see. I got to the end, to the outro, and the audio was completely jacked. All in all, I was pretty impressed. Stardust delivered on how they market it. I mean, granted only three casts a piece, but man, I beat those jig heads into the rocks as best as I could, and I couldn't see anywhere. So we'll say, after I finished filming, I kept fishing, and I took that net head out with the speed shrimp, um, I've been known to hit a couple of docks as I try to skip underneath of the docks. That happened more than once, not on purpose, and that head held up the entire time. So I also caught three fish. Boom. It was a good day, Tater, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think it was a successful test. If you'd like to see more videos just like it, then click right here. If you're curious about the name SDG, then click right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I can get the editing done. I'll see you guys at the Vice.